This morning, if I were to title this message anything in the next 20 minutes, I would title it All or Nothing. If you're taking notes, I'm going to title this message All or Nothing. Because I believe that the huge, the huge problem in the generation, because I'm traveling almost every single week from church to church, speaking to youth groups, and the problem that I find in youth groups in America today, especially in Asian youth groups, is that we have learned how to follow Jesus while not giving everything but giving some of our things. How to give Jesus everything. And I believe that the reason why our young people have not learned how to give everything is because your parents haven't learned how to give everything. I know I'm not going to get any right there. <laughs> See, the problem with this generation is that we are we are results of our family. We are results of our parents. We are results. And I'm not just talking about a, a physical, natural parents, but I'm also talking about spiritual parents. And we have spiritual leaders, pastors and leaders in the church today. I don't know how it is at your church, but in churches today, we have preachers who do not pick up their Bibles until they get ready to preach. We have pastors who do not spend time with God until they are in sexual sin. We have deacons and elders who have no prayer life. We have ministers who don't have a worship life. We have worship leaders who are rock stars and not anointed. And the problem with this generation is that we have followed under a system that is religious. And I know that we say, it's not religion, it's relationship. Shut up. Because we've taught you that you can get up every morning and spend your QT, you know, quiet time. Which, by the way, I don't understand how it's going to be quiet time when you're talking to God. When God speaks, everything gets scared. It's not quiet time, it's quality time. You miss that. He's a ruler, so he, he barely even walks. He has people carrying him around. Because you know why? Just like in this generation, we're looking for people to esteem us instead of humbling ourselves to esteem other people. We've gotten really good at people lifting us up and making us feel good. That's why some of you uh, don't, don't come to church when you're feeling angry or if the pastor talks to you and the pastor rebukes you because it's really all about you and it's not all about Jesus. You haven't learned yet how to die to yourself and come alive to Christ. And so you've got people caring. That's why you're the big guy on campus and you're the cool guy on campus because everybody around you lifts you up and makes you feel good and gets your little insecure self-esteem together. That's why you cake on the makeup ladies and you try to feel good and try to put your skinny jeans on so guys can see your hump and your rub because you don't really like yourself and so you've got to have people esteem yourself. You, like this man, are a rich, rich young ruler. And maybe you don't have a lot of money in the natural, but in the spiritual you have accumulated great wicked wealth. But the Bible says in verse 7 that this man, he, what? He runs and he falls to Jesus. It's very interesting because this is something we don't see in the church anymore. I would say most of us in this room struggle with pride. You might not even know it, but you are probably the proudest person in our generation. See, some of us don't realize it, but we cannot follow Jesus unless we're willing to humble ourselves. In order to get to a higher place in God, it takes humility. God will not accept you trying to be better than him. See, that was the problem with the devil, because pride will turn an angel into the devil. You missed that. Pride turned an angel. Do you know the devil was a worship leader? My question is, are you good or are you godly? Because depending on how you see God is how you will live your life. Most of you don't realize that God is God. So is he good? Or is he God? Because the enemy of great is always good. Good will always keep you from being at a place of greatness. Jesus will never allow you to settle for just being good. See, some of you are okay with just being good because that's how you are in school. Like, I'll just get my 3.5 and I'll be awesome. I'll be great. I'll just do just enough. And that's how it's translated for some of you over into your Christian walk. But good enough is not good enough. See, God will always take people who are messed up. You don't believe me? Look at Moses. Moses was a flippant stutterer, a murderer who was an outcast from the society, and God calls him a deliverer. Noah builds the ark and then gets solid drunk, gets butt naked, and lays in the ark. How would you like to come to church one Sunday morning and see Pastor Jason sitting on the altar butt naked drunk? <laughs> Yet God still used Noah to save all of creation. Peter denied Jesus three times. There was a young teenage girl who came up and said, Excuse me, aren't you one of those uh, uh, followers of Jesus? Um, did you follow Jesus? Um, and Peter's like, listen, it's in the Bible. The Bible says he curses her. He cussed her out. Excuse me, you blanky, blank little girl. Oh my gosh. You're so mean. You definitely are one of those Jesus followers. 
And God still used Peter to transform a generation. He preached the first message that we see in the book of Acts. And he stands up and he wants 3,000 in one day. He adds them to the church. How would you like to get a mega church in one day? Some of you don't really care because you don't come to church to meet Jesus. You come to church to visit your friends and to have the fellowship and the food after. Because the food is always awesome. You that much, so I just like to get it all out on the table. Some of you are frequent masturbators and addicted to pornography. Yep. You know I wasn't going to give me any amens right there. <laughs> and you're saying, God can never use me because I'm so messed up and screwed up. David, listen, David had problems with women. You're saying, Pastor Dell, God can never use me because I'm messed up sexually. David was on the roof one day, saw his best friend's girlfriend, looked at her, or his best friend's wife, looked at her and said, oh my gosh, she's hot. Tell her to come over here. Has sex with her, has a baby with her, and then kills his best friend to cover it up. Anybody ever done that? Anybody? <laughs> Pastor Jason, no. <laughs> any, any of your parents have ever like, well, I don't want to ask that because I'm not the truth. Uh, uh, right? And so if God can use David, who he said is the apple of my eye, what makes you think that you're not the prophet of God? Let's talk about Gideon real quick. Gideon must have been Korean. Gideon was shy. <laughs> God says, Gideon! I want you to go defeat the Malachites because I am sick of the Malachites. I want you to knock the, the stuff out of them. <laughs> Gideon's like, oh my gosh, I can't do that, God. I'm scared. I have an SAT prep. <laughs> um, my, my mom said I can't do that kind of stuff because I have hot one. And, and that's really extreme. That's what they do in the Pentecostal churches. And we're Baptists. Um, okay. Uh, God's like, no, shut up. Go do it! But I'm fearful. No, you're not! Yes, I am. No, you're not! You're full of good. No, God. <laughs> and you know, that's sometimes how we are. God's like, I want you to go to the mission field. Um, I'm poor. God's like, no, you're not. Uh, have you seen my bank account? You're not poor. Uh, yeah. See, here's the question. Are you going to believe God or are you going to believe your, your, your situation? Are you going to believe the truth of God? Because some of you, every time you deny God the right to have control of your life, you call him a liar. And there's a lot of people on that soul. God's not on the top of that list. Paul was a murderer. Anybody ever murder anyone? In our life, you know what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 24? He says you cannot have two masters. You will hate. Everybody say hate. Hate. Say hate. Hate. He doesn't say strongly dislike. He says you will hate one and you will love the other. See, what Jesus really says is every time you make a decision that you want to follow after sin, what he's really saying is that Jesus, I hate you. Um, that's not Jesus. <laughs> Like every time we follow after sin, every time that we don't pick up that Bible, every time that we don't pray, well, every time that we spend more time on our Facebook and more time texting our friends and more time talking with our girlfriend and we spend no time with you, well, we're really saying, what's up, that Bible? We love you. Dude, I can't stand you. You make me sick. And I know it's a harsh reality to look at, but some of us need to get it, that we are living our life with two masters. And Jesus says, you cannot have two masters. You're going to love one. You're going to hate the other. Stand on your feet. Thank you, God.